Just a quick little overview from me. You will receive a link to view the recording within 24 to 48 hours. Again, that comes directly from my email. Also, another thing, Oscar and Alex will both be at the Kata Summit coming up very soon. Um, something else to make note of for that summit is that there is a solar eclipse happening and hotel rooms are selling out in the Midwest very fast. So please get your hotel room, even if you aren't registered yet for the summit, but please make note of that. Um, Oscar, right on the nose here. Hand it over to you. Good on you. Thank you. Thanks, Skylar. And as I always say, um, appreciate the background work that you do in getting something like this up and happening for the benefit of others. We've got lots of registrations, well over 200. So that's a terrific effort. So uh, Alex is a packaging CI supervisor at Church and Dwight's Washington plant, and has got various qualifications. But most of all, and one of the reasons I wanted to talk to Alex, he's very hands on and practically applies concepts like the scientific thinking and the coaching patterns um, where it matters most and he's uh, uh, learns he learns a lot from that so thanks Alex for giving us the time but it's much appreciated so yeah no for having me uh, you said a few times to me and a couple of cases that scientific thinking has been practiced on the shop floor with your plant through three things problem solving CN, uh, Church and Dwight's daily management system and what CND call uh, mini Kaizen's, Church and Dwight call mini Kaizen's. So can you describe what that looks like for each of those three? If we can go through one at a time, please. Sure. Yeah. So so the first two are, are kind of intertwined, um, but I'll, I'll start with the, the daily, the problem solving. Um, yeah. So, you know, last year, and it was actually right after we had really kind of been formally introduced uh, to Kata. Uh, we had an initiative to try to drive problem solving to the floor. You know, how do we take abnormality management, root cause analysis thinking at the floor level? And, and what we decided to, to start doing was we created um, this really simple problem solving format for shop floor employees called a 3C. And this is a tool that you can find, you know, online. It's basically um, you have a concern. Uh, you have what you think would be the cause, and then you have what you think could be a potential countermeasure. So what we did was that we being the three, that being the three C's. Those are the three C's. Yeah. yeah. So it's a really straightforward problem solving methodology. Um, and, and what it tries to do is it just boils down to, okay, somebody observed something happening. Um, it gets them to start to think, okay, I saw something. Um, now, what do I think is actually causing that? And then what, what kind of experiment, what do I think I can do to actually prevent that cause from happening again? Um, so it's really boiled down from even, even below like a five Y type of problem solving. And we implemented that on the shop floor um, and we integrated it in with our daily management system. So, you know, our lean daily management system would be our tiered meetings. So how we pass off from shift to shift, um, how we kick off every shift um, with a pre-shift kickoff meeting. Um, and then how we escalate challenges that on the shop floor we couldn't resolve, uh, but then we would take that to our, our daily um, tier two meetings, like our management meetings. So, so just just hold just hold there a couple of things. Mm -hmm. One is you used a key word in amongst all that with it being experiment. So is that something you've added into the three C thinking, or was it or was it that or was that there? Um, I think it's something that. It's a little bit of both, right? So when the countermeasure effectively, it really essentially is, what do you think you could do to resolve the problem? But we've yes. taken it a step further to not just, I think we need to go out and purchase, you know, a new machine or yeah. some kind of larger idea. And we've really made it more, what do you actually want to try to implement on the line? So we've yeah, taken right. that sense of ownership and transferred it to this is a problem and somebody else needs to fix it to now the shop floor is coming up with the ideas themselves. Um, and whenever you transfer that ownership, um, you really get more engagement with the ideas because now it's their idea. They want to take, they have a sense of pride in the solution that they're implementing. Yeah. And I think what I really like about that approach is that there's not the, it's not, it takes away that pressure of let's this, let's do this. It will work as opposed to let's try something. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and there's been times too, where we, um, we go back and we look at a 3C and we'll see, okay, we see the cause and we see the countermeasure at the bottom and the concern they'll say, or they, um, the, we see the concern, we don't see the cause and they'll say, we don't know. 
they'll put a yeah, question right. mark, right? But they still come up with an experiment for, we don't know why this isn't working, but we're still going to give it a shot to put some kind of solution in place, which is exciting yeah. to see because before we've even gone out there, the shop floor has already started to put together a solution or a proposed solution for us to put in place. Yeah, right. And I you mentioned a key word there that I think a lot of people will be interested in, and we certainly mentioned it in the blurb for the webinar about engagement. So mm -hmm. is that how, is that been the, in your view, that uh, use of the three C's and, you know, experiment rather than the freedom to experiment is probably a better way of putting it. Is that been, in your view, one of the main reasons you've seen that uh, level of engagement increase? Is that oh, absolutely. It's It's been transformative for us. Um, wow. And, it, I think it's really just because now you have a workforce that's, um, they feel empowered to bring yeah, up right. ideas. They bring empowered to come to you with solutions. And it's um, it's kind of like a safe space for them to speak to to management, to just go out and implement something when they want to. Um, yeah. And, you know, just, just with our, our daily management system, what we've done is our morning boardwalk. So every day we go out on the floor um, and we walk each of the production lines and the the shop floor gives us a status update. Um, and one of the uh, the deliverables in that is, do you have any three C's from the last 24 hours? And they'll present uh, all of the problem solves that, that they've gone through. Who's so, they? The shop, uh, the shop floor. Yeah. So and we'll is have it, is it, is, it, is it anyone from the shop floor? Is it the natural leaders who tend to be there or how does that it's, work? It's typically the natural leaders. So, you know, a line lead, um, but yeah. we'll, we'll rotate. So we'll have certain people cross-trained. Um, so that way, you know, anyone who was running the line on that day feels comfortable to present. Yeah, right. Okay. And you mentioned the daily management system, the formal part of it. Um, oh, no, sorry. I've got another question prior to that. Mm -hmm. to, to make this adjustment, did management have to, I guess, change? Was there a conscious change in management mindset to the you know, solve the problem as opposed to freedom to experiment. Because in my experience, that's a vastly different, um, that's a vastly different manage mindset coming from top management. You know, solve the problem means you, if you don't, you can, you've got it wrong, um, which is one view of management. The other view is the freedom to experiment to find the problem. And that's completely, it might sound small, but it's a very different approach. Was there a custom, was there a conscious decision of management to, to adjust or did it just sort of happen? Uh, there's definitely a conscious decision to adjust, right? Because when we, we, we've always known that we've wanted to get to that point of let's start to drive this problem solving mindset. I mean, before you even get to the shop floor, we have to think of it as managers, right? Of, you know, uh, when we have some kind of issue, especially with a uh, machine failure or something like that, you instantly want to diagnose the problem where you, what you really want to do is do a formal problem solve, really think, try to experiment, just go try something. So that was the first adjustment. And then moving into the shop floor was a bigger adjustment. I think the the biggest um, hurdle that I saw at first, and now we still face this sometimes, is sometimes you're going to have experiments or suggestions that really just won't work. Um, and you yeah. do have to sometimes... You, you know they want it. Yeah, and sometimes you still have to put guardrails up, right? I mean, you can't you can't just say, hey, go out and try anything. We are, we are um, a food manufacturer, essentially, making, making gummy vitamins. So there are regulations that we have to follow, right? So you kind of can put those guardrails up at first. Um, but yeah, it was definitely... Key word there. You've used a key word there, guardrails, and I've heard you use it before, and I've heard others. Just explain that. Can you give an example, or just explain what you mean by that, or give us an example? Yeah, so I think one, you know, that probably anybody in the manufacturing space would think of is it has to still be a safe practice, right? We can't introduce any kind of unsafe condition to the line um, or to the workplace. And then another would be making sure that we're following all of our food safety defense protocols. You know, yeah, we have, right. we have clear you. SOPs, we have clear rules on that. So those would be some of the examples of the guardrails. Um, and then there's there's some other ones too, where, you know, maybe you want to make a modification uh, to, to the equipment and there's certain levels that we could make on the fly and then go in and, and make a change later. And there's others where we need to have, you know, formal change requests, engineering requests, things like that. Um, yeah. so th those are a little bit more ambiguous, but the, the biggest ones would be, you know, any kind of safety or, or food quality uh, issues. I think I know where it came from. I think I've heard Mike Rother say that cost is a guardrail. In other words, if it's cost, if it's going to cost you a lot of money to run this experiment, then think of something else. <laughs> sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> more or less. So back to the, um, the, your daily management system, when you have your standups, 
mm-hmm. um, and a, pro, a, a, a 3C is brought to that, that means that it hasn't been resolved, yes? We'll, we'll do both. We'll actually do uh-huh. both. So, so we'll review all problem solves, and then we'll ask the shop floor, do you need anything else from us to still resolve uh, you know, the challenge that you're having? So it'll be a good mix. Um, between some problems or issues that, yes, they've resolved, some that they haven't. But either way, we're always having a dialogue back and forth um, with the shop floor, which I think adds to the empowerment because now they know, yes, someone heard us. They heard the solution that we put in place. Right, okay. So then when it comes to the management level, um, are you guys following the 3C pattern as well or do you go to a more something deeper, if you like? So we, we do both. So the first layer that we always take is well, once we have those stand-ups, we go into kind of a management tier two meeting review, you know, the last 24 hours of, of the plant's performance. And we'll go back and review every single uh, 3C and we'll do wow. one of two things. If it's already been resolved, we'll actually put, we, we use, I mean, these are really simple uh, paper forms and we'll put a big, big, like three by three sticky note on it and say, great resolution, great problem solve. If it was an off shift that we haven't seen or some kind of follow-up to maybe an unresolved issue and we'll actually put on there what our resolution is. Um, So we always make sure that it's a closed loop. So the shop floor is always hearing the feedback from us. Um, But then above that, we'll use more, some more advanced problem solving tools like a five Y or, or a fishbone diagram, sometimes going into like an FMEA kind of analysis or a fall tree, Uh, but it's still a bigger problem if you like. Yeah. Yeah. Something that we can't completely uh, solve on our own. Um, or just solve with kind of a simpler mindset or, you know, tool. I love the simplicity of this. Dave Hyams asked a question. He's on the webinar. He's um, ex uh, uh, Boeing president. Yeah, um, he said, is there a root cause analysis method used to arrive at the countermeasures to try? An example would be five eyes. But I think you've sort of answered that. Perhaps not at the 3C level. It's not kept that formal, if you like. But, um, but, it, but yes, at the higher level, the deeper stuff, if you like. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's where we'll go in and we'll do, you know, some some checks back on countermeasures, making sure that we have effectiveness in place. Um, and even with those three C's, let's say it's something that the shop floor didn't resolve. Those oftentimes will get escalated up to a five Y problem solve. And then we'll do an effectiveness check on those as well, on those countermeasures. Okay. And thank you. And Mike Osterling has asked an interesting question. He said, it says, great stuff. Have you tried this approach off the shop floor? In other words, not on the factory floor. If so, any adaptations? Have you have you tried it off the shop floor? That's the first question. So, so we haven't yet. Um, okay. It's still, you know, it's it's a mature process on our site, but I think it's still relatively young overall. Um, but yeah, we've right. really driven it mostly in the shop floor. But I'd say, you know, our our entire site now, um, at least at the Ridgefield plant, is kind of using this 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 levels of problem solving mentality. As we ask, yeah, I love it. And Elizabeth, this is um, uh, very much connected to what we're saying now. Well, what you're, you're at now, Elizabeth Weeks, who's a registrant, has asked, "How do you gain consensus on the changes created on the shop floor?" In other words, I think what she may be getting at is, you know, shift A, that all something we're all familiar with. Shift A wants to try this. Shift B says yeah. that's crap, and blah blah blah. So I think that's what she's getting at. How do you handle that? Yeah, so we you know we try to use data to make sure that we're you know any kind of decision that we're going to make we're going to use data to to justify it. So you know we'll kind of use like a point in time of okay we had this abnormal event occur we did a problem solve we made a change let's review the data afterwards and see okay did the change actually come back or not do we have the issue again? Yeah, right. So it's the use of the data which is the mm-hmm. driver if you like. Absolutely, it <laughs> takes the uh, the emotion or the ambiguity out of the decision making. Exactly. And was that a, <laughs> how did you go with getting people, the shop floor people, anyone, if you like, because we tend to, we sort of tend to have to be, and, um, again, my experience is there needs to be a bit of encouragement to use data. We all jump to conclusions. I think that's mm-hmm. a natural human thing. We all have opinions. So that, that, that slow down, hey, let's slow down, let's use data. Was that a challenge? So, uh it's, not so much. I think how we're able to use data is because we have really, um, I call them rules to the game, but they're basically like um, set expectations that we have for any of our problem solving methodologies or tiered meetings. So when we have these issues, we have steps that we go through. 
So yeah, right. getting those implemented originally as kind of a more of a broader lean implementation was maybe a little yes. bit more difficult. But now that we have those, it is easy because when we say, okay, this happens, someone has an opinion, the first thought is let's look at the data, let's look at the information. Um, and if we can use that, then it'll help to, to kind of either Sometimes it reinforces, you know, the the bias that we already have or the solution that we, we think we came up with. And other times it's, hey, the data, it's not always conclusive. Now let's go back out to the shop floor. Let's ask people. Let's conduct more experiments. Let's find out more information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is an experiment in itself. So um, uh, Mark Graff has just posted a question um, and he apologized for entering late. That's fine, Mark. Um, but it hasn't been covered. What criteria defines something as a concern? In other words, we, I think what he's, you know, we've all been in situations again where everyone on the factory floor has their, well, you've sort of set, answered the question maybe, has their opinion and we should do this, we should do that. How do you, what defines a valid concern as such? Yeah, so we actually have an escalation matrix that defines. Um, what matrix? For, it's called an escalation matrix. Uh, yeah, right. So, so we actually explicitly call out for safety issues, quality issues, delivery issues, or a five S or kind of line abnormality issue. Um, what actions need to be taken? So, for a three C, which would kind of trigger that concern, uh, we have very we have prescribed um, safety, uh, you know, requirements, prescribed yeah, right. quality, prescribed downtime, and that's when the shop floor knows. Okay, I need to do one. Now, that in terms of uh, difficulty to implement was probably the hardest. Because whenever you're saying to someone, hey, this is something new, they view it as an, a, you know, an addition to their work. Uh, but once we demonstrated that as a management team, we're committed to this process and that we're actually going to provide feedback and hear from you. Now it's something exciting. Now I have people coming up and they give you a call like the shirt tugs of, hey, look at this 3C that, you know, I just I, I submitted. Um, so using those escalation matrices helps us to know when we have to do one. But again, it's that engagement and showing that you're committed to this that really helps drive things. Yeah, that's no, spot on. James Clark has just asked, is there a, how is the 3C submitted? In other words, is it formal? If it's a simple bit of paper, you said, a simple letter sort of size. How is it actually submitted? Is it formal? Yeah, so it's, it's really simple. It's basically, um, you know, an eight by 11 paper that has a format on it of the, you know, the three C problem solved. And then we have bins on their, uh, hour by hour boards on their lines. So yeah. once they complete one, they place it in the bin. Uh, and then when we go through for our boardwalk, we go over and we collect, uh, all of the three C forms from there. Um, we've, we've, played around with doing, you know, a digital form using Microsoft forms is a really great tool to kind of simplify yeah. things. But sometimes there's something, um, I think there's just, uh, there's something Maybe extra simple. about writing, you know, exactly. you write something down, you hold it physically. Uh, I can go on the boardwalk and say, Hey, you, you should have done a three C, but I don't see a paper. It's just another visual indicator for us as well. Alex, I think what you said then is very important. So I'm working with a company called story construction in Iowa and they, they're a construction company that have a planning system and it's completely post-it based. Anyway, yeah. when they went into that, um, you know, they, they do, you know, hundred million dollar projects. So they've built new schools and all that stuff, but their planning system is post-it note based. Anyway, when they went down this track eight years ago or started to go down the track, they made a very, fu very um, fundamental decision. Do we go high tech, low collaboration or low tech, high collaboration. And I mm -hmm. think that you just captured that then and what you just said, that you're going for low tech, high collaboration, get humans to talk together and make notes on a bit of paper and stuff. I think that's brilliant. Um, when it gets submitted at that mm -hmm. point, are the three C's completed or is it just the concern C? So we do say all three are completed. So, and that's right. the sense of ownership to the floor of it's not just you raise a concern. It's also you identify what you think caused that. And then what is your proposed countermeasure? So yeah, right. it won't be submitted without, without those three. And, and sometimes, you know, the countermeasure we, we do get on occasion, the, I don't know, I just don't know what to do. Um, yes. and that's what we as a team go back out and, and may help the individual with that too. And then how does that work? So Someone submitted a 3C and it's complete. They've got an idea. They want to try something. Does someone have to pardon and bless it? Uh, it depends. Yeah, it de it, it, yeah, it would depend on, on what solution was put in place. Um, yeah. so, so sometimes it might be, you know, it could be a really basic line stop. 
and they just yeah. went out and tried something new. But what's beautiful about those of the what the this the things that are put into place on the shop floor that then you know we don't know about is th those things are always taking place, right? It's yeah, just yeah, a matter yeah. of what we're yes, documenting yes. and capturing them. So through yeah. this, it's not just been the problem solving. It's also a way for us to kind of document new processes. Now we know, hey, um, this is a new way that this shift does it. We're going to make a standard work instruction and then maybe an SOP, maybe even get down to you know a TWI or a JIB level because now we understand that this is something new that the shop floor wants and it's working. We've captured it. So it's a great yeah, tool right. just, just to capture really what's happening on the floor. Yeah, 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 I love it. Um, my, in in uh, registering for the webinar, Charles Gertz has asked, "How much external support would you did you plan to ensure the system kicked off?" Mm. In other words, when you were getting this going, you know, a year ago, whenever it was, what ex, what what management support, what external support did you sort of garnish? Yeah, so it's I think anything, uh, especially in lean, you you have to have your full management teams like buy in for this. Yeah, yeah. So it was really just making sure that when we created this system, it wasn't you know uh, just the CI organization that's creating it. We brought everybody in, so every kind of key manager would uh, come in to make the system, but then also make sure that we were implementing it. So nothing external in terms of you know external to the company, but. Um, with with the management team, it was okay. The plant manager, this is his blessing, was actually his directive originally that he wanted. Yeah, right. And then everyone below him is okay. How are we going to create this system? And whenever you create it organically in house, um, like I said, even down to the shop floor or up to the management level, when when you create something, um, you're you're the odds of you seeing it through are much higher because there's yeah, a personal yeah. touch to it as well. Makes sense. And in terms of sustainment, which Charles also asked, it seems to me it's sustained through the daily management system and the leader standard work that goes with the daily management system. Would that be a fair comment? That's how it's being sustained. It is. It is. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think it's, so it's being sustained through the daily management system, but you also have to sustain that as well. Right. I mean, you can't right. lose your rigor in terms of these are, like I said, the rules to the game This is how we're going to operate. Um, you can tweak it and change it, but it needs to be controlled. Um, so, yeah, okay. the daily management system so, is how we tie it all in. So, how is, so there's that. You've opened the door there. Uh, people will be interested, I reckon. How do, what do you guys do that sustains, that you think, do you feel, sustains the daily management system? Well, I think it's the the rules to the game that I, I, I kind of coined before. And then it's also that management buy-in. You know, we've all, yeah, right. we've all kind of agreed that this is the way that we're going to run the site. Um, yes. and, and we've created it organically and we've, we've used things that work for us. Um, the management system has gone through a bunch of different iterations in the past of how we structure our tier meetings. We're doing a little bit of a change right now, again, um, in, in terms of how we kind of track uh, accountability and countermeasures. Um, and, it, you know, now actually, as I'm talking through it, it's a little bit, again, of that experiment. I said to our engineers, I don't know if it's going to work, but just make sure you have a process um, I don't care the tools within it and we may fail for a couple months, but that's okay. Let's just try it. Um, so now that we've, we've got like, we've got the confidence to know that we have something that works. We also have the confidence to go out and experiment more uh, with, with yeah. making changes and know, like you said earlier, um, if it fails, it'll be okay. You know, that just means yeah. opportunity to try again. I think that freedom of that is so critical in something like this, this freedom of knowing, as long as you don't burn the place down, obviously. It's that yep. micro, the thing that I saw him do years ago, you know, we run experiments within the box of risk. That creates so much freedom for people and, um, yeah, as opposed to jamming something down their throat, which doesn't work. Absolutely. I think, Absolutely. I think it feeds into a gold rat statement that I, keeps popping back into my mind and I hear stories like yours it comes back is the only um, energy that overcomes the energy of resistance is the energy of discovery and mm -hmm. I think that's what you're capturing within your approach here it's exceptional tell us about the um, mini kaizens we've talked about problem solving and the daily management system but you also do these mini kaizens sure, how does yeah. uh, how does that how does scientific thinking fit in there so the mini Kaizans, actually, if I take a step back, is really how I think any of this has been like possible in terms of getting the, the shop floor engaged. Mini yeah. Kaizans are, are literally just a way for the any improvement that the floor wants. It doesn't have to be triggered. It doesn't have to be meet an escalation, th escalation threshold. It's just 
anything that the shop floor is working on, they submit it through a Microsoft form. So it's a QR code as what we call a mini Kaizen. And we really kind of yeah. took the, the term Kaizen of, you know, good change liberally and said, I don't care if you move the trash can four feet because it's easier for you. You just, you just made your workplace better. So they'll range yeah. from very, very small type of 5S wins to we put a new process in place for how we're going to rack pallets. Um, and, you know, we started it, uh, other church and Dwight plans um, had worked, had, had done something similar in the past, actually our one site um, had, had done it. And then uh, when I first started in Washington last year, I realized, wow, this is really powerful. So let's, let's just see if we can, let's just open it up to the floor to just not even suggestions for improvement, actual improvements. So the first year we started, we said, okay, we'll have a goal of a hundred. So if we do two improvements a week, we'll hit it. And we hit 127. So then this year I said, okay, let's do 150. Let's see how we, you know, if we can hit 150%. Yeah, right. uh, I just looked at the dashboard. We're at 827 for the year yeah. and to, yeah, you know, right. small improvement projects. And it has just grown exponentially because it's the floor is now empowered to make changes uh, whenever they see something that needs to be improved. Um, and now they're competitive with it. Now they come and, and they're, they're competitive within their own departments and it's, again, that same methodology of experimenting of, you know what, we're just going to go out and try this. And yes, hey, if it right. doesn't work, the the undoing it will be another another improvement, right? Because we tried something uh, and now we're, we're going to try something new again. Uh, it, so that, that whole process is really just, it's gotten the floor so engaged that when we implement larger projects, when we do really large chartered Kaizans, um, new processes, they're already on our side. They're already hungry for the continuous improvement um, because they're doing it every day. They see the value in it. So we don't have to necessarily pull people, right? Now they're pulling us in, into improvement. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's just been, uh, it's a butterfly effect. It's, it's really been really great for the site. Alex, if they've got, if the people on the floor have got half your enthusiasm, I think the um, plant's probably reasonably well situated. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Sherry, uh, Sherry's asked, uh, how long have you been using this system as such? And I almost hesitate to call it a system, but anyway, that's by the by, because I think that's dangerous. But um, about the gear, is, it, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the whole daily management system, its current iteration has been about no, a year. But the three C stuff. That yeah, goes yeah, in. just about a year. Actually, I think it was a year, um, the week prior, so early November was when we actually, we did a Kaizen uh, on, yeah, on right. this whole process. So yeah, just over a year. Yeah, right. Very good. Um, and as we're getting close to having to finish. I know you've got to pull up right on the half on the um, half past the hour. So Tony Burns has contacted me about, I don't know if you know this, about repeating the similar exercise to what I did with you guys with scientific thinking a year ago. So I'm going to make sure you're involved in this discussion because I think we might need to, um, I think it'd be very wise for us to adapt some language um, and the way we go about it with, with, so we tie in very closely with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we, you know, so one on one makes three, so I'll be in contact we go. And I'll suggest to Tony that, that when I contact him, that we, that we, that we make sure we don't, that we, yeah, we build on what you're doing rather than, um, you know, give a different message if you like. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now we do need to finish and I know there's plenty of other questions there, perhaps, uh, Skylar or Jim, if you can send them to me, the ones that haven't been answered, and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, and if I can't, then I'll ask Alex. But just a point for everyone, you have probably noticed Alex's enthusiasm. He will be presenting at CarterCon next year, and he loves talking about this sort of stuff because it energises him, as you can tell. So come and listen to him speak, and then more importantly, you can ask him questions uh, direct to yourself one-on-one -on -one and, and learn a lot from what they're doing. So th Alex, I uh, really appreciate your time. I know you're busy and you're, you're up in Montreal rather than your home plant, but I very much appreciate your time and joining us here. It was great talking to you. Yeah, no, it was great. Thank you for having me. Um, like I, like you said, it, it does energize me talking about these things. I think, it sure um, does. <laughs> you know, we, we I touched on it a little bit last year. At, at um, Last year's summit, I got to speak for a few minutes and just I think fundamentally when we really boil all these things down, it's getting the shop floor engaged and just um, really driving the scientific thinking. The tools that you use are going to differ in how you implement it. Um, but if you understand the why behind it, which is just getting people to, to think 
and that pattern, um, you're going to be successful in it. So but yeah, I think really that's the key is because we all talk about getting people engaged. And I think that's easy to say, but it's not hard. To, it can't be easy to do because it doesn't happen very well, mostly. Um, but it's getting people to think using a pattern. Yeah. I think that you captured it, even just that sentence, get people to think using a pattern, not randomly think, but use a pattern. Um, well done. Appreciate Absolutely. your time, Alex. Uh, very much appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye, Bye everyone. Thank you so much for attending. We will see you next time.